I'm Keith Warren. I'm a hunter, <laughs> a fisherman. I'm throwing a big old bait because I'm looking for a big old fish. A conservationist. Oh, come on. A family man. And I'm proud to be a deer farmer. I'm taking a road trip and we're going behind the scenes of today's most innovative deer farmers and wildlife management operations in North America. This is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Located in the beautiful Texas Hill Country is a deer farm that most people never knew existed. It's a place that for decades has been leading the deer farming industry with state-of-the-art research and producing some giant white-tailed deer. Today, come along with me as I discover one of the biggest reasons that the deer farming industry is where it is today. Welcome to Four Canyons Ranch, the best kept secret in the deer industry until now. This must be my ride. Howdy. How are you? You must be Chris. You must be Keith Warren. That's me, but I'll tell you what, lots of pretty country around here flying in. There, isn't there though? We've got a lot of this country to see too. All right, let's get after it. I came here to see some big deer and tell everybody about a secret. Oh, we got some big deer. Yeah. Just for the record, I want you to know that the deer industry would not be where it is today without the man that owns the Four Canyons Ranch right here in Texas. Ken Bailey, who is the owner of this ranch, is a hunting enthusiast. He is known for being one of the forefounders of the deer industry, and a lot of deer hunting information is learned from deer farmers. And so really on this program, I want to introduce people to Ken Bailey and kind of tell about the way the deer industry has evolved and what it is today. In the early 90s, I met Mr. Ken Bailey. When I ran across Ken, he had just purchased the Four Canyon Ranch and built some deer pens. And he wanted to produce the best deer. And I, I admired his motives because first of all, he wanted to make that ranch the best ranch there was and uh, was willing to put everything he had into it. And secondly, he wanted to do it for the good reasons because he wanted to see what he could produce from deer. And so I saw that as an opportunity to fully develop artificial breeding in deer. And Ken Bailey deserves an incredible amount of credit for this whole thing. He's the guy that, with no selfish motivation whatsoever, came up with the money and support, the backing to, for us to develop artificial breeding in deer. Ken Bailey is my father-in-law and is absolutely obsessed with the whitetail and whitetail hunting and whitetail breeding. He's also obsessed with his family and what he's done with this ranch is try to bring those two bridges together. We always say the saying, Ken was born to be a granddad. Uh, he's got six grandkids. He is the best grandfather you can be and that's what he prides himself on. I think that family is his most important uh, trait in his life and I think he wants to know the legacy that he leaves behind for his grandkids is one that's going to last many generations. I've heard of the Four Canyons Ranch but I had to hunt to find the place. <laughs> I come back here and I'm amazed. Tell everybody what it looks like and where you're located now. It's in Montel, Texas. We say it's from Montel instead of Uvalde because we're trying to put Montel on the map. There's nothing but a sign in Montel and Four Canyons. It's a 12,000 acre ranch right in the southwest part of the hill country. My father-in-law, Ken Bailey, is one of the greatest guys I've ever met. He, I respect him so much. He has a love for family and is so loyal to his family and puts that above everything. And everyone who meets Ken Bailey has something good to say about him because if he meets you, he will remember you for life. And he's just such a good person. He's salt of the earth. He's not a outspoken person. You don't see him in the, in the limelight. He doesn't even want us marketing for Canyons, really. He doesn't mind if we sell some deer from time to time to help pay for some of the costs out here, but his focus more is on improving the deer herd versus improving the image of Four Canyons or himself. Most deer breeders have never even heard of Ken Bailey, and he is, uh, he is one of my heroes. He's my dear friend, and I, I'll never forget what he did for me, for my students, for the university, and for this industry. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance, Deer Guardian Misting Systems, Four Canyons Ranch, Hoffpower Polaris, and LE Fence Company. Wow. 
this where we're gonna be staying? This is the deer facility. Yeah, right. No, I'm serious. This is where all the magic happens right here. Whoa. Wow, this place is beautiful. Hi. Hi. I'm Keith Warren. Ty Walker, welcome to Four Canyons. Hi, Ty. Come in and take a look. Okay. Oh my goodness. Now what is this place? This is our showroom. And these are all of our past or present breeders. They're the foundation of everything we have in the pens. Mm-mm-mm. Well, let's go out and uh, show me some deer in your pens. Oh yeah, let's go. Four Canyons isn't gonna be underneath the radar any longer. That deer right there is named Famous Amos. And I know looking at him, I've seen him somewhere before. Oh my goodness, look at this. Looks like a college laboratory. Well, it is. The owner's obsessed with white-tailed deer. Isn't that obsessed? All right. Show me around, look at this now. Ooh, so what do we have in here? This is the DNA room. Every deer in our pens is DNA certified. They all have a little registration paper, such mm -hmm. as this one. Yep, okay, how important do you think it is in the deer business to have DNA on a deer? Oh, it's absolutely necessary. You have to know who the mother and father are. If you're a deer farmer and you haven't had success growing big deer, odds are you're not DNA profiling your deer through the registry. And so what I would recommend is DNA every single deer that you have because if you don't know what you have, well, you don't know where you are and where you're going. He's exactly right. Let's go look at some deer. All right. All right, so who are these guys right here? So these are all of our one-year-olds. Every one of those is one-year-old? Every one of these is one. These are all yearlings. First set on. I mean, there's, I mean, there's some that you can look at. You can tell they're going to be exceptional deer. I mean, they've got already good framey deer as yearlings. Sure. But then there's other ones that are really tight, narrow. I mean, they're all branch antlered bucks. We don't judge them at one. We don't even hardly look at our yearlings. We want to judge them at three years old. We want to let them mature, get to what we think is a reasonable, mature age to judge them as far as pins. Now obviously because of the numbers of deer that we have in the pens, we can't hold them to that four and five year old stage of their life. Right. We have to judge them at three years old and get them out because of the rotation of new stuff coming online. Simply because of the production, you've got so many We've deer got... being produced. Let's go look at your two year olds. Let's do it. Two-year-olds? These are all the two-year-olds. My goodness. I mean, there's some beautiful deer in there. Okay, so how many pens do you have and how many deer total? We've got 52 pens and uh, right at a thousand deer. <laughs> and so folks, you see, that's how come Four Canyons can sell basically a deer herd. Okay, <laughs> if you're looking for a deer herd and you want it and you're impatient, just go ahead and Give Chris a call, because he can fix you up. <laughs> We've got the numbers. <laughs> and every one of these again, you got DNA pedigrees on every one of them. Absolutely. And, and so what y'all try to do is intentionally line up these pedigrees to where you're going to produce the best offspring possible, right? That's right. Okay, well, the two-year-olds look this good. And they look absolutely great, especially a couple of these are great big, wide, framey deer. <laughs> All right. Oh. What is the name of that one right there? That's McLovin. McLovin? McLovin. <laughs> and he's only two years old? Two years old. McLovin is absolutely incredible. All right, take me to your three-year-old, big boy. Let's do it. I'm ready to really be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> and these are all three-year-olds? These are all three-year-olds. Okay, so this is the year for these guys. This, this is, is the, this is gonna be like the the guys trying out for the football team go in the locker room see if the name's on the wall, if they're gonna make the team or not. That's exactly right. Explain to people what's gonna happen with these deer at this point, whether, whether they're gonna make the team or not. What goes on? We've already picked about three that we're gonna bring into the breeding program. So what happens to the others is we work it on a third. So a third of them get sold to restocking. Mm -hmm. 
a third of them go out on the ranch, and, and obviously the third that, that gets to stay and, and do some breeding. Now, you may think if they're let go on the ranch that it's a walk in the park to hunt these deer. These deer are allowed to live a long life. They've got food, they've got water, they're protected from predators, best y'all can do it. And these deer are living the life of Riley. Absolutely, and, the, and a lot of the deer that we pick to be liberated here at Four Canyons don't get hunted. This is our breeding stock to breed on Four Canyons. Now obviously the offspring, year after year and generation of 16 plus years of doing this, there are some big deer out there that are hunted and have to be taken. And they were bred out there and born out there and they've never been inside this facility. And that's an important thing to point out. I think something else too is that, that y'all do not commercially hunt this. That uh, if you're at home thinking, boy, I'd like to come hunt Four Canyons Ranch, you're, you, you're not gonna do it because they don't do that here. No, that's exactly I mean, the, the, uh, Mr. Bailey, he loves hunting and he's fanatical about it, but it's all about uh, his family and his friends hunting here. So, but uh, if you're interested in a big deer herd, <laughs> you need to come to Fort Canyons, just check it out. If, if somebody wants more information about Fort Canyons, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, best way is 830-591-9802. Uh, that comes straight to me. I can answer anything they want to hear. We have a website, fourcanyons.com. And if you come out here, if you, you really owe it to yourself before you buy a deer from anybody, you need to come out here and check out Four Canyons because you're not gonna, first off, you're not gonna meet nicer people and you're not gonna see a, a more impressive deer herd. This is pretty outstanding. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by the North American Deer Farmers Association, DNA Solutions and the North American Deer Registry, New Dart, and Sage Capital Bank. Okay, so I've seen the one-year-olds, two-year-olds, and the three-year-olds. Take me to the big boys now. Let's go see them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Show me the big studs. Holy moly mama. These are the big boys, huh? These are the big boys. They, yeah, big is an understatement. Oh my goodness. This is what selective breeding and matching up the right pedigrees is all about. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, also helps that uh, you've had a guy like Ken Bailey be so inspirational for everybody to get this done, huh? Absolutely. So tell me about these guys. How old are they? And uh, tell me a little bit about them. Well, all of these in, in here are four years old. They're all a lot of products of, of our AI program. Our breeder bucks are now just as big as what we're AI into. Well, that's the reason why you, that you're starting to market in, in, in a different way, too, because Literally, I mean, they, they've exceeded all your expectations. Absolutely. In the deer farming industry, it is guys like Ken Bailey that have really given it kind of the support needed to get it to where it is today, huh? That's exactly right. I mean, so what happens is now, because we, we live in a different world, times change, and we live in a world that people want things more rapidly. Okay, well, thanks to guys like Ken Bailey and, and other deer farmers that we're able to produce bigger deer more rapidly Right. to get it on somebody's properties. They're liking that shade, aren't they? They are. I'm um, liking that shade. Yeah, I don't blame them. <laughs> I want to know everything about that deer. I want to know his name. I want to know how old he is, who he's out of. Oh my God. <laughs> he's something else. We call him Hollywood. He is a six-year-old. He is a product of our AI program. He's beautiful. He, this is by far his biggest set of antlers that he's grown. That deer is absolutely beautiful. I can see why you call him Hollywood. I mean, look at him, he's showing off. But That's you know, right. when you get in a breeding program like here at Four Canyons, the predictability is factored in because of the DNA. I mean, we look at it. I mean, That's right. without the DNA profiles, there is no way in the world that I don't see that you're gonna come out with a deer like that. No, not at all. But that deer, y'all bred for that deer. We didn't bred you? for that deer. Once again, it goes back to DNA solutions. Everything that's sent off to them, we figure out who's doing it for us. And we don't stray away from that. Once we find out what's working, what that niche is, we fine tune it a little bit. And that's what we do. That's how we get a deer like that. Find out what's working, stick to it, and fine tune it. 
You start stacking the right dough with the right buck and look. That's you, it. You got Hollywood. You got mm. Hollywood. Star power. Famous Amos used to be the signature buck. Famous right here. Amos was. Famous yep. Amos was our signature. He's on our logos. He's on our plane. Famous died last year at nine years old. And uh, we've been looking for a new marquee buck. There he is, there he right is. there. And his name is Hollywood, folks. That's it. <laughs> what a deer. More and more folks live in the city today, well, than ever before in American history. And you gotta ask yourself, with all these city folks out there, how in the world do they stay connected to the outdoors? How in the world do those city folks get educated enough to be able to make good decisions about the outdoors? The answer is simple. They're getting outdoors. They're hunting and they're fishing and camping and visiting state parks and they're water skiing and they're doing things outdoors. And they're getting involved in conservation groups. And that's good news for all of us, folks. So when you're out there and you're thinking that the city folks, well, they don't know come from Sikkim, you may be wrong. For more information on the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance, please join us online at DeerWildlifeAlliance.org. Never in a million years would I have thought that I'd be sitting right here today. But we're very thankful that we're here. Both me and my wife hope that we can have a long future with deer in this organization, this rural lifestyle that is slipping away. We have a four-year-old girl that, and I may get a little emotional, but she is, she's it. She is, uh, that's it for us. That's, that's where it is for us. You talk about the TDA and Nadifa and our real community, this, this is the future right here. This is where the future is headed for that, those organizations. And we're fortunate enough to work for a man that, that allows us to, to, to be a family, to bring our daughter out here, expose her to all this. And, and uh, we're, we're very blessed um, um, to be in this setting. We love it. We're very passionate and very obsessed about these deer, it's, it's a wonderful lifestyle. This program is dedicated to the men and women of the United States Armed Forces, past, present, and future. How uh, important are these deer in this place to the grandkids? All of the grandkids are reaching the age of they're just starting to hunt right now. And Ken, he's teaching them how to appreciate and conserve the wildlife. These kids are all avid outdoor enthusiast. These are the memories that Ken wants to have right now. Uh, I think that Ken is a um, family man. Uh, he prides himself on being dedicated to his family. All of his vacations are with his family and his kids, but he is an outdoor enthusiast. He loves the wildlife. He loves hunting. He loves being out in nature. He's hunted all over the world and his favorite place and where he wants to call home is right here in Montel, Texas. I think Ken is just a He's a real special person uh, when it comes to wildlife. You could not ask for a better family to work for. And, and, and I hate to say work for, I should say work with. They have brought us in as part of their family. That goes a long way with me. That goes a long way. That gets me up in the morning and gets me out here and to do what we do for them, that's, that's priceless. You don't find that every day. You're only as good as your reputation, and these people have a reputation of being honest, hardworking, good people. Despite everything that they have, they're very grounded, homegrown people. Well, y'all are deer farmer number four in the state of Texas. That's right. I mean, I, and, and I've been doing it quite a while, and I'm number 1858. There are thousands. <laughs> I mean, it's like, y'all go way back, and, and I think, my gosh, to fly under the radar for that long, why has Mr. Bailey kept Four Canyons such a secret? The only reason that we've got to a point in our pens where we have to get out there is just our, our, our numbers. And Ken has, he's not a man to be in the limelight. He wants friends and family to come out and enjoy it. And so that's what we've kind of flown under the radar, so to speak. Even when he's in here doing what he does, the minute there's a camera to be pulled out to document what we're doing, we'll take the picture and go back to look at the picture. No Ken Bailey. He has out the back door, back quick. But if you want some of the greatest deer in the world, 
you need to come to Fort Canyon. So at least give Chris or Ty a call, and I promise you, uh, when you come out here, it's going to be worth your gas money to come out here and look at some big old deer, isn't it? Absolutely, and we're, we're, our doors are open. If you call and say, I'm five minutes away, we're here. You don't have to buy a thing from us. If you want to come out here and look around and pull our ear a little bit, come on. Well, Chris, Four Canyons Ranch is better than what I thought it was going to be. This right here, this place is hopefully now not the best kept secret in the deer industry because y'all have, well, one of the biggest herds, certainly one with more history than any other deer herd I've ever been to and with an owner that is more committed to growing the industry than anybody I've ever known in my life. So anyway, I appreciate you, you taking the time to show me around. And y'all, if you're interested in purchasing any kind of deer for a deer farm or stocking deer, I mean, y'all do a lot of stuff for stocking whitetail deer. And again, they can move deer out of the state of Texas. One of the very few right. farms that can actually sell deer to place in Oklahoma or Louisiana or any place for that matter. So anyway, give them your phone number so they can contact you. Okay, it's uh, 830. 591-9802. We have a website, 4canyons.com. Well, I'm out of here. I think I'm going to be driving my truck next week. That's today. right. <laughs> I got the right thing to go in. That's right. Before you make your next Polaris purchase, you owe it to yourself to check out the number one Polaris dealer, Hoffpower Polaris. Log on to KeithWarren.net for 24-7 access to more information, more video, and full episodes. Reproductive services for deer and wildlife store is provided by Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics. <laughs>